I've been giving this a lot of thought, Ross. And for days after you asked me to go to the cabin, I, I couldn't figure out why I wasn't looking forward to it. And then it came to me. See, something happens every time we go out of town together. I look at the luggage tag on my suitcase and the name says Blakethorpe. It's just so bare, so unloved. <laughs> unloved? Honey, nothing could be further from the truth. Well, it's really hard to feel cherished when you're asked to apologize for wanting something that everyone wants. Nobody's asking you to apologize for anything, especially not today. So I want to get married. Is that a crime? I love you, Ross. And you say you love me, but when it comes to popping the question, well, I'm expected to go underground like a little mole and wait for you to broach the subject. Well, I hope that when I do broach the subject, it'll still be okay. Not if it's years. I don't want to wait years. I don't <laughs> want to wait years. I shouldn't have to wait years. Blake, you don't know how funny this is. What's so funny? What? That, that uh, rebellious me suddenly turned out to be absurdly conventional? No, 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 no. It's your timing. The timing is what's funny. Well, I'm sorry. If I waited until you had this little weekend, I didn't realize that I... I I couldn't go through with it until I got here. A compromise, okay? You drive with me to the cabin, and then you decide there. We can have a nice dinner, some quality time, and who knows, I might surprise you, and you'll have a totally different outlook. Yeah, right, right, right. Build a little fire, give her a couple glasses of wine, and then maybe she'll put her head on your shoulder and purr like a good kitty again. Oh, now, come on. Don't make me sound like an old lecher grabbing at his secretary. Well, I can't help it if I'm upset. Help it? Of course you can help it, Blake. You can start out by listening. I am listening. No, you're not. Not today. Not now. You're not listening. You're too busy launching into this childish ultimatum of yours. That's it. That's it. I said that if you use that word childish once, just once, I was out of here. That's it. Goodbye. Adios. No, Are no, no. Blake! 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 Camp, I tried to call you, but I couldn't reach you. So we went ahead without you. Luckily, I was able to get myself registered as your daughter's attorney of record. Because no one had been named yet, I assumed that you were just going to go with a uh, public defender. Yeah, the court said they would appoint one. Well, there's no way a public defender could get the kind of deal that Macaulay did. What deal? We haven't even had the hearing yet. Well, I met with the judge in chambers. And I was like, able to get him to agree to $100,000 bail. So this, this hearing today is nothing but a formality. And I know that seems like a lot of no, money. No, no, it's, it's okay. All we care about is that you never have to see the inside of this place again. It might take me a couple of hours to do a hundred grand. Um, what time's the bonds been closed? Camp, um, it's been taken care of. Please, Ham. Please let me do this a little bit, okay? Oh, also, tell me about the interview. What interview? I persuaded Nick McHenry to go on camera with you to tell your story. We can leave right after the hearing, the bail hearing, and go straight away to the journal and set it up. Julie, I don't really want to talk to anyone, okay? I'm sorry. But you do want to help David, don't you? Come on, Cat. This is the best possible way, the perfect antidote to that poison that WSPR has been spreading around. Okay, fine. Well, what kind of questions am I going to have to answer? Mainly, Nick is going to ask you exactly what happened the night that Vinnie Morrison died. Think about it. This is the first time that the public is going to hear the truth about what happened. Instead of this stupid insanity about David being some kind of hopeless repeat offender. And you and I know that he never meant to kill anyone. And you'll finally be able to get that across. And I'll be there to make sure that Nick doesn't ask you any questions that can incriminate you. If he does, I'll intervene right away. In fact, Julia's put together a sample list of questions. I've already eliminated a couple of them because I didn't like them. May I see those? There you go. Why don't it mention of David's prior conviction? Especially if you can help prove that that case was mishandled. Because today's questions should only deal with what Catherine knows firsthand. That's how we keep her credibility intact. She was an eyewitness. She saw what happened when Morrison died. I'm sorry, Julie. Listen, I'm her attorney. I plan the strategy. And I don't think it'll be in anybody's best interest to bring up things that happened six years ago. Okay? Okay. Is it okay with you, Cat? How is everything going to be okay when I don't even know him? Know this. I will do my best. 
promise you. matter with a good old-fashioned can of these twist offs half the time they don't and half the time they they split your thumb wide open thanks that's all we were saying you know just thanks well um, great terrific you said it skull but i'm not finished yet oh please why 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 must you have a big production because if we can't make a big fuss out of a silver star, what are we supposed to make a fuss out of? And, Buzz, you tried to make us believe that it wasn't yours, and now we know better than that. Yes, that's right. Frankie called Washington. You did what? That's right. They said you saved a whole platoon. Well, congratulations. a complete stranger to tell you what your old man was really made of, huh? Buzz, he only called because you didn't want to talk I'm about it. He called because he thought the rest of you were giving me too damn much credit. He called because he wanted some pencil jockey in Washington to tell him that Frank Achilles Cooper Sr. was the saddest excuse for a soldier that ever listed in this good God's army. That is what you wanted, wasn't it? Wait a minute. No, you wait a minute! You want to celebrate something? You want to kick up a fuss? Celebrate the fact that I stagger down those stairs 5.30 every morning to prime the grill and start the coffee. Celebrate the fact that while everybody else is tucked in and cozy and going woo, woo, woo to Arsenio, that I am scrubbing the floors with a mop and a wire brush. And what is more, I am proud of it. But that doesn't seem to impress you. Now, what impresses you is a piece of tin on a ribbon. And you weren't even there to see how I got it. Well, it's, uh, it's funny now that he's finally said it. I got to tell you, I feel a little better. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, after hearing that he got the medal, I gotta tell you, I, I really don't feel that affected. He still stayed away for 20 years, right? You're hard, you know that, Frank? People always say that about me, but you've got me beat hands down on this one. No, I'm just being honest. No, you are being an ungrateful idiot. Ask your daughter. You need a credit card for a car. I don't have one, but I was thinking, you know, maybe I could get Kat to get... No, help. definitely not. Kat's supposed to think that I'm already gone and that's the way it's got to be. Okay, but then who am I going to... I'll, I'll be back in a while. Wait, 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 wait. Where are you going? Well, I'll let you know after I find out if it works or not. Look, you're not going to try to steal your uncle's credit card. I, I already tried that, Bridget. Remember, it got me nowhere fast. I'm not going to do anything stupid, okay? You smell like cucumbers. There's um, shrimp and cake in there, too. The cake isn't really good, though. But, hey, know. it's already the best meal I've ever tasted. What would I do without you, Bridget? Well, you certainly wouldn't be going to some foreign country, would you? practically killing myself trying to get rid of one of my dearest friends. This is insane. So what is the point of talking? Point? I don't know. Maybe there's no point. It's just that I had an entirely different vision of what was going to happen today, so I decided to give it one more try. Ah, <sighs> all this trying, all this talking, nothing should be so hard. You're the one who's making it so difficult. Because I refuse to believe that you have this pathological aversion to marriage. 
Boy, Vanessa was right. <laughs> Vanessa? About what? Well, she said that for some people, marriage is like a cliff and you have to give them a good shove. Oh, Vanessa's been hanging around the Lewises for too many years. She's beginning to talk like H.B. Ross, I know that there were reasons. I know... I know that when you jumped off that cliff before, you were very badly broken and bruised. But I'm not Carrie. I know that. I'm not sure you do. It's been years since she hurt you, and you're still afraid of getting burnt. And here I am with not one, but two failed marriages under my belt. And I'm not afraid to take the plunge. Why is that? I don't, maybe it's because you're a brave and open person, and I'm a pusillanimous worm. I didn't say it. And as for your two failed marriages, maybe they strangled to death, because when you start talking about your needs, people could be standing right before your eyes turning blue. Well, if you have something to say, say it. Oh, I have a lot of things to say, Blake. Things I've been saving up for months, but now they've just gone right out of my head. Where are you going? To the cabin. Alone. So please don't follow me. No, 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 no. Blake! No, 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 no. I think I know what you're talking about. You do, huh? Yeah. It's sort of like, um, the first time that I put on my uniform. Suddenly all these people were, they were grinning at me and they were tipping their hats to me and it really ticked me off because these people who wouldn't have looked twice at me when I worked in the diner were suddenly lining up to shine my shoes and, and it really makes you wonder what's real and who you can trust. They weren't your family. I know you think that this change of heart came for all the wrong reasons, but it's not because of your men or even because of the money from Marina's operation. It's been coming for a lot of months, okay? And I just haven't been able to come out and say it to you. But, you know, you, you do all these terrific things, and then it's just something that it, it, it's something like it feels okay for me to feel what I'm feeling. Let's not have any big declarations, okay? What are you afraid that I'm going to say I love you? Oh, I know you wouldn't go that far. Well, I might come close to it. What would, what would, what would you do if I, if I asked you to walk me down the aisle on the mountain and I got married? What if you did? Well, I mean, would you say yes? In a moment. You can't keep me from going to the cabin fun. Oh, here's the front door. No, you can't go to the cabin, Blake Blake. I've got the keys to the cabin. Well, I happen to know where there's a spare set that Ed said I can use anytime I want. That's not fair. I was the one who thought about this whole thing. If only one of us can go, it ought to be me. Guess it's gonna come down to who's willing to exceed the speed limit. Of course, we all know I'll get there first. You're so law abiding, you won't go over 65. 55. Oh. Something else you can hate me for. I don't hate you. I love you. Refusing to sleep with me until I obey a direct order to put a ring on your finger is not love, it's tyranny. And legally, it offends me. Have a wonderful time. Come on, look this way. Uh, here, you can sit. Excuse me, excuse me. Right here. Okay, you all set? Well, welcome to the zoo. 
This is where the uh, so-called creative types are going to be arguing about cameras and lights and angles and their poor excuse for a script. <laughs> so I suggest you just do what you're doing. Just sit right here and relax and forget about it. Uh, Listen, can I offer you anything, anything at all? I mean, we have an amazing array of things that I can offer you. We have uh, cold coffee, <laughs> warm soda, and stale popcorn. No, it's, it's okay. I'm fine. Thanks. No, you're not. But you're gonna be. You really will. And with a little bit of luck, so will David. What happened to six and seven? Macaulay felt that we should only ask Kat questions that she could answer to as an eyewitness. If we don't bring up the prior, it's going to look like we're afraid to. I have to do what's best for my client, Nick. You're doing what's best for you. But hey, that's all right, because you can't hide it forever. I found something out tonight that could open up the entire case, overturn the verdict. What, you think I'm bluffing? Do you really care what I think? Do we have a problem here? We cut some questions, and Nick's not too happy about it. I was getting wired for sound, so I don't think we have any problem. You doing all right? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> you just pretend that there's nobody else here, all right? Just you and me. Today, the role of Hart Jessup is being played by Sean McDermott. All I wanted for is the deposit. Yeah, well, suppose Dylan looks at the bill and decides that this was a charge to a rental company. This is a construction company, is it not? And they rent construction trucks all the time? I, I, don't, I don't see what the problem is here. Dylan gave you the credit card. He's not going to want to go over every little hundred dollar expense with you. It's different because he's building his own house. See, Dylan charges everything to the company account. That's way he gets it cheaper. Then he has to reimburse them for everything. Well, that's fine, because I'm going to give you the cash. Look, just forget it, okay? Don't do this if you're not comfortable with this, all right? I want to do it, okay? There. What's up with you? Why are you so serious? Well, I'm thinking some pretty serious thoughts, that's all. About me? And the stupid chances I take? Yeah. And why you take them. You know, the luckiest day in David Grant's life was the day that you became his friend, Bridget. Yeah, well, it cuts both ways. David's gone way out on the limb for me. You get so intense when you say that. What did he do, Bridget? Wish I could tell you. Sorry. Uh, my reasons for asking are a little selfish. <laughs> well, I'm just curious to know the uh, secret in earning someone's undying loyalty. You have no secret to learn here. I mean, you have it. Even though I don't deserve it? What do you do? How can you say that after everything I've done? All right, come on. I didn't give you a choice. You're amazing, you know that? Please. I'm sorry. You made me promise I wouldn't do that again. You're kidding. Why did I do something that stupid? Look, Hart, I mean, last time, it was different. You weren't exactly yourself, you know? Yeah, I was drunk. Yeah, but this time it's like, it's like you're, you're here. It's like you wanted it. Does that change the rules? Maybe. I, I've, I've... I gotta think about this, though, okay? Yeah, maybe you should. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you should. Hey, Hart, we're taking off. So you wanna come up with some cash, or uh, do we break your legs? Payday. They always get a little crazy on payday. I'll be uh, right with you, Kenny. 
Okay, this one would take a minute. You want to wait? Wipe your face. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I really should get back to David, you know. Hart, Hart, come here. And perhaps most importantly, this will be the first time that we in the media and you, the viewing audience, will have had the opportunity to hear from someone who was actually on the scene the night that Vincent Morrison died. Now, Kat, you struggled with Vinnie Morrison yourself that night, isn't that true? Yes. Um, I got to the diner before David. I was a little bit worried because Vinnie had been making threats. So he threatened you before that night? Yes, he threatened both of us. He threatened me and David, and he especially hated David because David stood up to him. But he told us that we should stay in our place because we were black. Then obviously there's no doubt in your mind that when he arrived at the diner that night, it was racially motivated. Absolutely. Why don't you tell us what happened when you arrived at the diner? Well, when I got to the diner, it was um, pretty dark, which is quite unusual. And I called out for David, and then I called out for Stavros, but no... That would be Stavros Kuparakis, who was rushed to Cedars that night with multiple contusions. Right, and I didn't realize at the time that Stavros was was there and he was slightly unconscious so he wasn't able to to yell out for for me so the next thing I knew Vinny came out and he grabbed me by my neck and he put his hand over my mouth and he told me not to scream otherwise he would break my neck he actually said that he would break my black neck to be exact that's not all he said is it Cap? no he smiled and he said that he had caught himself a nigger. Hey, Maggie, would you put the TV on, please? Sure. Why, what's Hi. happening? We listened on the radio on the way over. Nick McHenry's going to do an exclusive interview with Cat Speaks on 6 o'clock news. But Nick doesn't work for WSPR anymore. Well, we think that Jilly must have asked him to do the interview. Wait, Cat's been found? Yeah, the cops found her a couple days ago, but they wanted to mm -hmm. keep it a secret. Mm -hmm. Then he asked David to clean the floor. Oh, yes, he um, kept saying, get on your knees, get on your knees. And he wanted David to clean the floor so that when he raped me, the floor would be nice and clean. And the best part would be that David would, would be able to stand there and watch. Can you just take your time? We realize that this is very painful for you to remember. Okay. Okay. What you need to understand is that from the very beginning, David was only trying to protect me. After Vinny ran out, David did not run after him. It wasn't until we saw Stavros laying on the floor and when we saw him, I mean, we both just lost it. David lost it, and that's when he ran out. That's when he went out into the di out of the diner into the alley. Yes. Was Vinny still there? All right, now, Kat, did you see yourself what happened outside? Yes. David and Vinny were fighting over the knife. And for a second, I thought that David was the one who had gotten stabbed, but I saw this strange look in David's eyes, and the next thing I knew, Vinny fell to the ground. And that's when I realized, that's when we both realized that Vinny had fallen into the knife. Now, this is the difficult question, Kat. Why did David leave the scene? David knew that his fingerprints were on that knife. And he knew that no one would believe that this whole thing was an accident. But you saw with your own eyes that it was. Yes. Yes. 
David Grant is not, not at all violent. If anything, he's trying to, to stop violence. You've sacrificed a great deal because you believe in him. You were arrested, thrown in jail. In fact, Cat you were just released put in on jail? bail just a few short hours ago. Oh, Isn't Julie, that true? we didn't have the heart to tell you. There's more, Julie. I'm the one who put her there. I'm from um, a very protected, sheltered lifestyle, and I lived in the best neighborhoods. I've gone to the best schools, and where I'm from, no one would really call you a, a nigger, especially not to your face. And what I've realized is that there's another side to life. There's a side to life that thousands and thousands of people suffer from, where they're being judged and condemned for, for something that really has nothing to do with who they really are on the inside. And now I want to believe in this justice system. That type of judgment and condemnation is what David Grant is going through right now. I would like to thank Ms. Catherine Speaks for sharing with us her experience today. Thank you for having me. Are you okay? part of the interview with Kay. What'd you think? It was wonderful. I wanted to come and tell you myself. Thanks. So I'm gonna go uh, check with my client, make sure she's safe and sound. Good night, Nick. Good night. I'll see you. Okay. You two were almost nice to each other. It's a momentary truce. Oh. Well, I think I may ruin it by telling you this, but, um, there's something you should know. What's that? This woman that Macaulay told me about that he was involved with, he said that they broke up because he had to arrest her. So maybe... Maybe your theory about her being a prostitute wasn't too far off base. Okay. I appreciate you telling me. Yeah. One thing I do know for sure is, um, whatever she was, he loved her with all his heart. Something happens to his eyes when he talks about her. 
I think she may be that one person, that one love that you just never get over. Well, I know what that feels like. Hi, Mindy. Hey. Harley, I forgot to tell you. Nick wants you to call him. Oh, well, then I'm glad I came over. Anything new? Yeah, it's on the computer right over here. I'll let you guys get back to work. Melinda. Thanks. Sure. Are you ever going to talk to me again? I can't believe you put Kat in jail. Well, Julie, she had one other choice. She could have stayed with her father, but she refused. I had to go with procedure. I mean, I never felt this bad about anything in my life. Kat! Oh, honey, are you okay? Oh, no, it's How's a long... David? It's really a long story, Julie. Listen, I am so sorry that I wasn't able to make your shower. Oh, don't even think about that. Listen, can I get you something? Oh, I, I think maybe she'd like a little dinner. Okay, there's plenty of leftovers. I'll be right back. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad to see you made bail. Yeah, and the judge even said I could get my old room back, so... Good. There's surveillance outside, and I'm staying in David's room. But, uh, Kat, maybe you'd like to switch rooms, you know, so you can be next to David's things. Oh, Jilly, yes, I would love that. Thank you so much. Oh, listen, I'm going to go upstairs and lie down. I'm kind of tired. Right. I've had it. Good night. I'll tell the officer outside that you're safely in for the night. Thank you, AC. Julie's cat here. Did he let her come home with you? I mean, is she here? Yeah, Bridget. She <clears throat> went upstairs, you know. She was kind of wiped out, so maybe you could talk to her tomorrow. No, this, this can't wait till tomorrow. I mean, if it waits till tomorrow, it's going to have to wait forever because this is their last chance, Julie. This, this is their absolute last chance. I promised David I wouldn't tell anyone, but I know where he is. I wish David would come out of hiding. You know, I wish he'd run away in the first place. A man does crazy things when he's desperate. Mm. Oh. Look at what you almost did the other night. Are you going to bring this up to me every day for the rest of my oh, life? All I'm trying to say is that when you get cornered, you lose your good sense. I don't want to see it happening to you again. I said I was sorry. Obviously, it wasn't good enough, was it? Frankie, what? What is wrong now? There's nothing wrong, sweetheart. Look, I was trying to make this a happy day for your father, and every time I turn around, I see you screaming at him. Look, I said I was sorry. I also pitched in to get him in the car. What more do you want? I don't want anything, okay? Oh, sure you do. You want me to have tears in my eyes and call you dad, and you don't even care if you've earned it or not. Oh, gee, I thought I earned it by keeping you out of jail. Jail? Jail? What is he talking about? Buzz, I, I, I know you like to, to talk with your hands like I do, but sometimes you exaggerate, and sometimes I do not understand anything you're saying, so you have to be careful. You cannot just go crazy and say things like, Frankie is going to jail. Am I crazy, Frank? Go ahead. You just brought it up. You're anxious to tell her? Tell her. Lenny, your husband's a proud man, but sometimes he can be too proud. He was so determined to get the money for Maria's operation that he was willing to... Uh... Oh, come on, don't lose your nerve now. Come on. Come on, she's hanging on your every word. Frank, armed robbery carries five to ten. How would Eleni have felt? How would your daughter have felt if they didn't get to see you for five or six years? Pretty much the same way I felt when I didn't get to see you for a lot more than five years. Wait a minute, you were going to steal, Frank? No. This could not have been your idea. It had to be that, that, that friend, that Jonesy person. It was his idea, wasn't it? No. It was my idea. I called him. You couldn't even come and... You, you couldn't even talk to me, Frank? You had to just lie to my face? Just lie to me, huh? Look, you don't have any idea what happened. Oh, listen, you don't, you don't. I hope you're happy. Quit yelling at him! Lady, listen. No! Listen, Frank, I hope you're happy. That's amazing. 
Now, why didn't anybody catch this the first time around? I mean, here are two different articles, one saying there were two shots fired, the other saying there was three shots fired. Now, no alarm bell goes off? Suppose the mirror was right. Suppose three shots were fired. Who fired the third shot?